The House That Baba Built, An Artist's Childhood in China by Ed Young. I was born in 1931, two years after the stock market crashed in America, two years after the greatest depression the world has ever known. China was invaded, leaving unknown numbers of people homeless. Four families found shelter during the war and the years of happiness in the house Baba built. As Baba said, crisis does carry a blessing within its curse. It's up to us to find it. War was spreading to Shanghai, my father said, like the crows that came in summer and covered the sky with blackness. He wanted to move somewhere he could keep Ma and the four of us safe. Soon there were five of us, Mimi, the oldest, defender of the underdogs, my youngest brother and me, Buddy, Eddie's tail, who followed me whenever I let him, Hardy, gentle and steady, a true scholar, fun-loving Fifi, at times a bit sneaky, and me, Eddie, a dreamer, quiet and shy. The safest part of Shanghai was where the embassies were, on the edge next to the fields. But the only land for sale there cost far more than my father could pay. So he offered to build a big brick house on it with courtyards, gardens, a swimming pool, and let the landowner have it all. After we had lived there for 20 years, the owner agreed. So my father, who was an engineer, began designing. This is the house that Baba built. When we moved in, what excited me most was the swimming pool. Only two other houses in Shanghai had pools, and both belonged to millionaires. Baba got the money to build and maintain ours by forming a swim club with other parents who had been educated abroad. After hours, it was our own private pool. Encouraged by Baba, who believed the sunshine would keep us healthy, we spent our summer days there. Even Ma, who didn't swim, socialized with friends by the pool. When we weren't swimming, we played with make-believe toys. I turned a rocking chair into a horse. It squeaked and thumped along the floors, leaving tracks in the house that Baba built. Sometimes cousins, aunts, and uncles visited. Even the adults joined in our games, especially when we screamed for help on the seesaw. I sat on the brush as the servant waxed the floor, making it slippery for social dancing my mother so loved. At night, grown-ups waltz whirling around the rooms of the house that Baba built. Adults huddled around the shortwave radio as marching music announced the war news. I couldn't understand the words, but the music made me sling anything the right shape over my shoulder and strut from room to room. I became a pilot, a mountain adventurer, a tape rope walker, Tarzan. When Buddy and I were captives on an enemy submarine, we banged down radiator pipes to send coded signals to the search party. We four older ones roller skated on the roof, sharing two pairs of solid steel skates. They rolled and rumbled on the concrete, making your first your feet, then as you went faster, your whole body vibrate. The faster you went, the more noise they made, louder than thunderstorms and torrents of rain that flooded Shanghai in the monsoon. One day I saw two fighter planes far, far away, swooping and cir circling around each other, two dots in the sky, now visible, winking in the sun, now hitting behind the clouds. It was exciting, but less real than the pictures in the stories Baba read us. Company arrived, and as usual, we had to go downstairs and greet the guests. The others spoke, but I didn't. With strangers, my tongue wouldn't work properly, and the words got jumbled. I was already shy, being tongue-tied made it worse, so I remained silent. Yaba, one guest teased, meaning per a person without a tongue. While the adults feasted, we five watched from the darkest, darkened stairs, hoping for leftovers, especially leftover meat. Baba charmed the guests with his stories and teasing until even the shyest and most stoic couldn't stop laughing. When we didn't have company, the bell on the stairway announced mealtimes. We five slid down the banister and rushed for the table. We were like grown bamboo shoots and always hungry. Our cook served whatever was in season, like fava beans, shelled and then sauteed with bamboo shoots. They tasted like new peas. When the beans got older, she mashed them. We liked these foods and some others at first, but by the second week it was, what, we're having this again? If there was meat, we had the platter and the, each other. Only the quickest would get a second piece. F Fifi's short, stubby chopsticks were usually the quickest. When, B when Buddy saw Fifi grabbing more, he had a way of looking at her sideways through his long lashes that she hated. 
Once when Fifi snatched a second piece, Buddy didn't look at her, but Fifi said, Ma, Buddy's giving me that look again. Ma scolded Buddy. Mimi stuck up for him, and then Ma reprimanded her. Baba defeat defended Mimi, his favorite. We three boys didn't say a word. One world war was more than enough in our lives. After Nat King fell to the Japanese, my aunt, uncle, and grown-up cousins, Wilbur and Sonny, fled to Shanghai. Baba built an apartment for them on what had been our skating rink. I spent a lot of time hanging around their kitchen. They had three working people to feed four. We had one working person to feed seven, so their food was richer. A cook was creative about feeding us, but with little oil and no meat, her dishes had a lean, watery taste that kept us hungry. One day when I was recovering from a bad cold, Ma gave me a paper and clearance. I was excited to draw the cowboy I saw so clearly in my head, but I couldn't get him on paper. I looked at my drawing and felt very frustrated. Then Sunny came down, listened, and like magic drew what I had seen. I loved and looked up to Sunny, and his playfulness made us all laugh. One day, Sunny... One day, sunny day, Fifi and I were happily playing badminton when suddenly it started to rain. So we stopped playing and put away our badminton set. But then the rain stopped, so we set everything up again. As soon as we started playing, the rain started. We collected our set, and once again, the rain suddenly stopped. This kept happening until we looked up to find our cousin Sunny laughing at sprinkling water from the deck of the house that Baba built. One night, we began playing hide-and-seek. Mimi was it. Fifi suggested that we sneak upstairs and play cards instead of hiding. Since by then we had exhausted every possible hideout, we boys readily agreed. We ran upstairs and began playing Fifi's favorite card game, Call Your Bluff and then Go Fish and Donkey. Mimi never even looked upstairs. She was too honorable to even imagine what that kind of portrayal. Some distant cousins of Baba's lilings moved to Shanghai. Their five children's ages fit like into ours like the fingers of two hands sliding in each other. Frank, Ted, Mimi, Fred, Hardy, Wilfred, Fifi, Eddie, George, and Buddy. Baba and their mother, who had known Baba in college, thought it would be nice for all ten of us to be friends. The first time we visited the Ling family, the boys ran upstairs, each one slamming the door behind him. Baba said, just like our house, when you hear one bang, you know four more are coming. We saw them next at dinner. We five didn't talk to them then either, partially because we were devouring our fried chicken. Our hands were only for eggs and large pieces of chicken fried in oil were an imaginable treat. The next weekend, the links came to us, it, but it, and it was our turn to run upstairs. But at dinner, Baba's jokes and tales were everyone together. In fact, our families became inseparable on weekends. At the start of the war, I often heard Baba whistling at his drafting table. But when the alleys joined the war in Asia, building construction halted, and Baba's engineering work did too. His income as a college professor could have feed us all, so Ma pitched in, starting different businesses. She settled on supplying cupcakes and snacks to the university, leaving jars of unsold candy in the music room. We began spending a lot of time there. It was our favorite place in the house Baba built, until the candies were gone. Hardy and Buddy did well in school. I drew pictures in my test textbooks instead of paying attention in class. We were all first to learn Japanese, but out of patriotism, everyone made a point of doing poorly in that class. Since I was falling behind in everything anyway, that was a kinch for me. Hardy was told to tutor me when he thought I wasn't paying attention. He gave me a chestnut wrap, a wrap on the head with his knuckles. But the help Fifi got became my favorite part of the day. Her classes read adventure stories in English. Treasure Island, Robinson Crusoe, Robin Hood, The Three Musketeers. Baba explained them in Chinese, and I hung around listening and looking at the illustrations. Sometimes Ma packed a picnic for the whole family. We'd get on our bicycles and ride out to just Field Park with a climbing tree and a hill we called a mountain. But one day it began to rain. When our meal was packed, we decided to wait it out. But then, when the sun came out, we couldn't go after all. It would be dark before we could get home, Ma said. There was a curfew during the war. No picnic after all that waiting. We were so disappointed. Why don't we have a picnic right here by the pool, said Baba. That's just what we did. Of all the picture picnics we ever had, that was my favorite. The whole family, including our dog Jolly, by the pool in the house that Baba built. 
The Shanghai summers were long, hot, and humid, and as the war went on, the pool became too expensive to fill. So he spent the long summer days in the shade of the garden, with the shrill hissing sisters. They sang in unison whenever the sun reached them. Some of us read books from our family library or played cards and board games. Hardy and I trained and fought our crickets. At night, we listened for deep breaths when that sounds with long pauses in between of potential champions. We rushed to the source with silent steps and a flashlight, mark the spot, and plan our strategy for catching the cricket at dawn. The ones that got away were always the biggest. The crickets we caught joined our stable. We fought them in pairs, ours against our neighbor Bobby Hose, facing each other in the area like prize fighters. The crickets fought their rounds until one scampered away. Those battles were the highlights of our summer. In the fall, after school, we rode our bikes and scooters in the dry pool, speeding through the crackling waves. We cruised down the slope through the crisp air, faster and faster, shrieking when we crashed into the blockade at the bottom. Leaves drifted down more slowly onto the deck of the house that Baba built.